Okay, so I had the, uh, the legs. I drew a line about where I want these legs positioned and I've just got them clamped in place right now. And what I'm gonna do is put a board, not this board, but I'm gonna put a board in between on the base um, and I'm gonna do a mortise and tenon in here. So I'm gonna measure across this distance and find out what that is and then add about two inches to each side for the tenon. Uh, and then I'll take these over to the drill press and do the, uh, the mortise in here. Um, and the purpose of this is I'm gonna basically bore holes through here and then use lag bolts to actually go into the uh, into the tabletop from underneath. So this is actually the bottom of the table right here. And when I have these in place, um, I'm also gonna have a stretcher going across a little uh, lower on the legs, but to keep it square. But for right here, this is actually gonna be the support for the table. So I'm gonna get this mortise and tenon out. I'll do the same thing on the other set of legs. And it looks like I am exactly 17 inches between the two. So I'll cut the shoulders 17 inches apart, extend the mortise out another two inches on each side. Then I'll take these over to the drill press, kind of get them hogged out with a bit and then use a chisel to clean them up. Okay, quickly to um, just show you how I'm laying out the, uh, the mortise in here. It's really not that hard. Um, basically what I did was I used, this is my board right here, and I just measured off of here, kind of put this on here, and then mark a, struck a line right here, because that shows me where this is gonna meet from the bottom here, using this as a reference edge. Then I actually measured um, the length of the tenon here, and that's how long this is. I struck another line right here. Now all I'm going to do is find the center of my board, run a line straight up, and then draw a couple of lines, one a quarter inch on each side of it. I'm going to use a half inch bit, but I need that center reference line, which is going to be the point for my bit to go and, and reference off of as it drills the holes down inside there. So basically uh, 3.790 inches wide. Divide that by two, because I'm bad at math and I use a calculator, is 1.8545. So using my trusty calipers, 1.854, oh, it was right there too, right? It's hard when you're into the thousandths. No, no. There it is. Look at that, lucked into it, 1.8545. And then basically just come in here, strike a line with this, and then go back and fill that in with pencil. And then I will just draw down that line. And like I said, this is just a reference line for the Forzner bit, which has a really sharp point right in the middle of it. We'll follow that line down. So I'll just come in here and mark this. And then what I can do is just to help myself in the chiseling part is to strike a line that's a quarter of an inch on each side of that because this is gonna be a half an inch wide tenon. So I'll just make a line here, make a line here. And that just gives me chisel references as I'm coming up from the bottom or as I chisel off the, the waste from the Forstner bit. So just draw a line there and come off of this side a little bit more accurate. Right, right there. All right, there we go. But like I said, this is the really important line right here. This is the one right in the middle that's going to actually allow me to guide my Forstner bit up and down through this mortise. I'll take off 
one on this side, one on this side going all the way down. And then what I'll do is I'll just knock out the rest of it with the Forstner. Come back with the chisel squared up and this will be ready to, uh, to stick the tenon in and move on to the other one. So let's get that done. And that's what we got right now. Just empty this out and start whacking away with the chisel and get this all squared up. Um, I went through with my uh, with my marking knife before I actually cut this and got a little bit deeper groove just to give me something to bite on um, instead of a pencil line. And you can see this, the chisel fits in there really nicely now. So. Alright, I had a couple of high spots inside there and then I went over and just knocked just a, a thousandth or so off of my uh, off of the end of my tenon here. Let's see if we can get that flush now. There we go. That is that is flush and tight and squared up pretty close to the bottom there and for someone who never does mortise and tenon that's good enough for me uh, now I gotta do the other side all right so I've got the mortise and tenon done on the bottom support and now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create uh, one of the cross braces um, and uh, I'm gonna do a half lap joint on this one so what I did was I just clamped a square in here so you can see that it holds it perfectly perfectly square so that this leg and this leg are perfectly um, perfectly parallel. And then all I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna measure how much wood I need from this side of here to the side of here. And that's 26 and a quarter. And I'll go a little bit long just so I can flush cut it uh, with a saw at the end. Um, so that's good. And I still know that the inside measurement here is 17. So I'm 17 between the legs. Uh, from one side to the other, I'm 26 and a quarter. So I'm going to need a board a little bit more than 26 and a quarter. as can be. So this is what it will look like with a half lap on there. So you can see that I have uh, got the cross beam in the bottom here and it's mortise and tenon into here and then on here is the half lap that we just did. So um, did this on the dado. It's a little proud right there. I'm not going to worry about it too much um, but what it does do is it keeps this from racking. It gives it a lot of support. Um, so there we go. So that's the half lap using the dado and then I've got to do uh, the stretchers and then pretty much I'm ready to start gluing up the frame. Okay, 
right. Nice. All right, yeah, this is really, because sometimes these legs want to rack just a little bit. And these are actually going to go a long way to adding some really nice support. All right, so the only thing left to do before I need to really glue this thing up is to get some stringers in here. Um, I may, I may go out and get some wider boards for that just to give some really good support across. I haven't decided yet. So probably next couple of days I'll go out, get the wood for those. And then basically the same process. I'm going to use half laps for the stringers, come in right about here, um, going across this way, one over here. And then that's it. Time to glue them up. All right. That's it for today.